The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Friday morning, 906 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and we get the markets in positive territory yet again. We get the S&Ps right now. You're up 13 points. Zooming in on the overnight action, four in the morning, you drive lower to about 4,500 right on the dot. Let's see, we get a low of 4,500. 0.25, so right at 4,500, and then the run higher begins. We get a pop as well at just after 7 a.m. this morning. Right now, we are trading at 45.25 right now in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, we are up 39 points right now, 14,803. The Dow's up 84 points right now, 34,688, and we jump over to the Russell up by six. Commodities, currencies, Bitcoin continuing to catch a bid right now, 45,145. Crude pulling back. We're under 110 bucks at 109.58 on the crude contract. Gold pulling back as well at 1954 right now. And we jump to the all important notes and bonds. We get the 10 year right now, negative by seven ticks. We're trading at 122.22. You get the 30 year negative by 14 ticks right now at 148.29. We jump over to the volatility index. VIX, 2170. Are we going to get a VIX under 20? Are we? It's possible, 2170, we were at 2149. You check out the VIX, you put it on a daily. The reason why I mentioned under 20, folks, we have not seen. Now we have, going back to February 9th, February 9th we have a VIX uh, right there, just barely under 20, but if you back it up before then, remarkable. We haven't seen a VIX besides that February where we touched that level, have not seen a VIX since we were trading January 14th. That is remarkable there. And hopefully you are getting my audio in the den then uh, to my producers. They were asking if they got an audio in the den there. Hopefully you guys can check on that and make sure. All right, jumping around to some of the stories we got going on this morning. It's Friday. We're coming into the weekend. It's the end of earnings season. It's the end of the quarter a little bit. I'm going to kick it off with a call from City. This one, man. Check out this. So this was a screen, gab, just screen grab just from Bloomberg this morning. City out there saying that they now expect, and I know it might be a little bit grainy, just got it up there. The bottom line is they're talking about 50 basis points, folks, in May, June, July, and September, and then 25 basis points in October and December. So they're talking about 50 basis points the next four meetings. Four meetings. All right, and to my producer, they are not getting this in the Tiger's Den. Hopefully you can figure that out. Uh... And perfect, they are aware. Okay, so uh, it'll be up there. Hopefully you're listening on Tiger TV if you get a chance. Look at that graphic, folks. We're talking about 50 basis points, right? You're talking about 50 basis points for meetings. Now, 50 basis points for the next meeting in May, highly likely. The next two meetings, very possible. Not many people saying that it's coming down the line for the next four meetings. It's gonna be 25 basis points after that for the next two. The disclaimer there is data dependent things can obviously change if inflation subsides faster than we expect they're not going to look for that many hikes if it doesn't maybe they say that 50 basis points goes five or six meetings bottom line is that is a stunning stunning call in my opinion folks uh the tenure is paying attention or the fed is paying attention to the tenure right whichever way it goes you just had a drop off man from about 129.04 129 we'll call it we're approaching 122 and a half we made it as low as 122 12 folks you're talking about almost seven points in the span of less than about two weeks over there on that tenure remarkable action to the downside in a big way Okay, what else we have going on this morning? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, jumping around to some of the other headlines I have going on. Let's see where we're going to kick things off. All right, what do we got going on here as we kick it off? Well, we get the stocks making moves. Yeah, this one's an important one. I'm um, getting a lot of headlines. The U.S. and the EU reach a LNG deal to supply deal to cut dependence on Russia. So they're talking about 15 billion cubic meters, uh, a fraction of the Russia supply, though. 
I mean, you're going to see this play out for years on end, folks, as Europe especially tries to disassociate themselves with the dependence on Russian oil. Very unfortunate they allowed themselves to get into that spot, thinking that somehow they could be so dependent on somebody so evil like Putin running Russia, and nonetheless, it comes back to bite them, obviously. Uh, but under the agreement, Europe's going to get at least 15 billion cubic meters of additional LNG. Um, though it's not clear where it's going to come from. Members will also work to ensure demand for 50 billion cubic meters of American fuel until at least 2030. The aim is to work with international partners to help the continent, continent wean itself off Russian gas, which accounts for about 40 percent of Europe's needs. Uh, staggering. Russia ships about 150 billion cubic meters of gas to Europe every year. So they're talking about 15 billion. They ship 150, but nonetheless, it's a start. And again, you are going to see this play out for an extended, to put it lightly, period of time. 40%, uh, folks, 40% does not happen overnight in terms of what they need to get rid of in terms of uh, Russian gas for Europe, 40%. I mean, that's just a staggering number. Unfortunate, they allowed themselves to get the, so dependent. Bed Bath & Beyond is rocking. So Cohen, he's going to get three board seats in a deal with Bed Bath & Beyond, the retailer to form a committee to weigh options for the baby business. Uh, the settlement ends the firm's second activist battle in three years. So he gets uh, the new board members were chosen by Cohen. Uh, three independent directors appointed to the retail's board. So he gets them. Two of the three members will also join a special committee to weigh strategic alternatives for Bye Bye Baby, an asset, an asset which the activists had identified to potentially be sold. CEO said in a statement that the company looked forward to integrating the new director's ideas. Our Bye Bye Baby business is a tremendous asset. We're committed to unlocking its full value. Uh, Cohen has about a 9.8% stake in Bed Bath & Beyond. He disclosed it this month. Uh, he called for the retailer to implement several changes, excluding exploring a sale of Buy Bay Baby or the entire company. They need to narrow its focus and maintain the right inventory mix to meet demand. Interesting to see how that plays out. He's the one that started the whole meme media at GameStop, founded Chewy, sold that for a few billion dollars, I believe, uh, came into GameStop. And uh, I think he's made billions off of GameStop as well at this point. But jumping over to Bed Bath & Beyond, BBBY is their symbol. A little bit of volatility. Uh, that, I believe, is when Cohen disclosed, disclosed that stake, the 10% stake in Bed Bath & Beyond. Be careful, folks, getting caught up in some of these meme runs. You get up to 30, and just like that, by the end of the day, you're trading at 22. And even today, on the news that he's getting three board seats, right? They're exploring the possibility of selling off some assets. They're selling off Bed Bath uh, Bye Bye Baby. They're exploring, you know, just options. Uh, the spike overnight, again, you would have gotten bitten. We're at 2347, but that thing is going to have some volatility uh, on the open, to say the least. Let's jump around to some of the other game stock, uh, meme stocks. <coughs> you got GameStop right now, a little bit negative. All of these stocks rocking and rolling. The run really began, uh, I guess, is that last Friday? Yeah, last Friday it really began. You were at 80. GameStop settling at 140 so far. AMC had some action as well. You were at 15 bucks last Friday. You're trading at $20 today. Um, yeah, so volatility on those stocks. But Bed Bath & Beyond, that's a legit one in terms of fundamentally. He's got some board seats there. And uh, he's going to probably look at piecing off that company. And maybe they keep Buy Bad Baby. Maybe they sell it off and focus. But as someone with a, a toddler that just turned, maybe it's not a toddler, but just turned one, I guess. That, is that a toddler? Maybe two starts toddlers. Uh, the baby business, folks, it's a good business to be in. Uh, demand, very inelastic when you're buying products for your baby that's blowing through outfits every few weeks. Stay tuned, folks. Everything we'll be right back. In the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now up by 12 points. We got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. Dow up 83. You got the Russell up by about six right now. Jumping around to what else we got going on right now in the market, talking about yields as well. When you look where we are. Uh, jumping down to that 10-year right now, you're negative by 12 ticks. We're talking about a yield right now, 2.39%. Look at the drop-off, though, just even in the last few minutes, folks, since I came on the air. You've had the 10-year trade down about 8 ticks, and we are right back to the lows we had yesterday as we get some quick movement right now coming into the opening bell. 2.4%, uh, the yield on the 10-year right now. And again, as I talked about, City talking about 50 basis points at the next four meetings. CPI, folks, it's crazy. What else are you going to do? Um, they probably have to get it under control. Very real that that is what is going to come down the pipeline, especially, okay, especially if CPI and inflationary data does not wane, then yes, they are going to push the limit on this thing very quick because they don't want it to get out of control. And 50 basis points over the next four meetings, while stunning in light of where this economy is, in light of where CPI is, probably, probably something in the realm, at least. Okay, let's jump around to some of the stories and some of the equities that are moving today. Um, this one was interesting in terms of Russia considering selling energy for Bitcoin to mitigate sanctions. As I got, I think, an eyelash in my eye here. Excuse me. Um, now, Bitcoin is catching a run today, and you have a few different things happen. So you have the SEC talking about the potential um, for exchanges to fall under regulation. That would then, though, lead to the ability that once exchanges fall under regulation, they would be able to launch Bitcoin, hard Bitcoin backed ETFs, not not futures backed ETFs. OK, actual Bitcoin backed ETFs, because right now the only ETFs available are by using futures. And when you get the type of action in some of these futures ETFs, just like we know when they happen with whether it's crude or any futures product, a little bit different with Bitcoin, where you might not have a physical delivery problem. But nonetheless, you're dealing with rolling, you're dealing with multiple contracts. And that means that the price of those ETFs can deviate from the underlying asset that the ETFs are supposed to be based off of. If you get a real Bitcoin ETF, uh, that would be a boon to the market. But here, to give you the, the bear side, okay, you want to know the quickest way for regulation lockdown to come down on the crypto sector entirely is if Russia starts using it to circumvent 
sanctions, which is basically what they're talking about. They're going to be selling energy in Bitcoin to mitigate sanctions. Uh, if you think that's going to play out, folks, that is one of the fastest ways of everything going on right now for there to be some regulation that that market may not like. So be careful. I mean, you've had quite a bounce in these markets right now. You jump over to the weekly. We've held kind of the trend line on this upward territory here, but you were just trading, folks, on February 21st at a price of 34000 That's the week of. Let's put it on daily to see the actual low there. Uh, February 24th, to be exact, 34000 We're up 11000 bucks. You're up almost 33% in about a month in the price of Bitcoin. And look at where we're trading into, folks. I would not be being, buying Bitcoin right now. Yes, you can trade higher, but we're pumping up into an area right now that you were up in the beginning of February. You were also right up to this 45000 mark on March 2nd. Both times we trade lower from there. And yeah, it's been a one-way trip from Bitcoin to 37000 But folks, think about it. If you are in any government right now in the U.S. or the West, and you're putting sanctions on Russia, and you see headlines that Russia is considering selling energy for Bitcoin to mitigate the sanctions, don't you think you would be at least exploring options to make sure that that has as little impact as possible in circumventing the sanctions? I would. So keep that in mind. Some other stories that caught my eye. Speaking of uh, AI, self-driving, all the above, FedEx is testing electric carts for the last mile delivery in big U.S. and Canadian cities. So 10 U.S. and Canadian cities throughout this year, they're going to plan to test electric carts uh, to make deliveries on its signature express routes. They hope electric delivery carts will help address major challenge it faces in every big city it serves, lack of parking. I mean, you see the quick graphic up here. Can't imagine trying to deliver when you're in that type of city uh, traffic as a delivery person. Traffic is hard enough when you're sitting there trying to get that done. But boy, it's going to change the landscape entirely. It's kind of here right now, but it's taken a lot longer than many had thought. And Boy, every time they seem to say we got it done, and this is going to be the first one, okay, in terms of you're going to have small carts that can operate on sidewalks, uh, probably can't cause too much harm. I say that lightly because you never know what could happen when you just got a computer running around with a cart, right? It jumps out into a street, maybe a car swerves. There's always bad things can, can happen, but the potential for harm is much less so than just self-driving cars all over the place that might not be perfect. And the impact it would have on some of these delivery companies will be monumental with that last mile of driving. Last mile of delivery is probably a better way to put it. You take a look at FedEx. It's been quite a pullback recently. FedEx this morning, you're down a little bit coming into it. Well, we got a bid ask straddling the close of yesterday, putting this on a three year weekly right back to the 50 percent on FedEx. We're sitting at 225. You got a bid ask spread above there and you're right in a nice area that we also bounced in in october for fedex uh i like the 618 sometimes too nothing to say if this market pulls back again that you don't trade down to 186 on fedex but you're almost a hundred dollars off the high and it would be transformational folks when these things start happening i mean you talk about companies like fedex companies like amazon i mean there are so many jobs that in the future will probably be done by robots and Future's coming faster than we all expect, but maybe not as fast as some of us expected, as in, you know, self-driving cars has been talked about for a long period of time. And I see many things in my daily life, folks, that make me think that the infallibility of self-driving cars is a far cry from where we are right now. You can't just be 98 or 99 percent efficient when you think about the number of calculations some of those um, AI machines would have to do. You have to be almost flawless when you think about the number of times that they're gonna be making decisions on a road or whatever, the number of random occurrences that may pop up that you can't quite plan a computer for. But self-driving carts, it's gonna be possible. I mean, you talk about Amazon, right? They're gonna have drones potentially dropping packages off. Maybe five years down the road, but boy, if it's five years down the road, folks, you're gonna to have to start thinking about that. Eventually, you're gonna start pricing in some of this now. It's gonna be a huge capital expenditure. But you have to know that computers are going to be cheaper than human beings in the long run when you talk about that type of labor. And it is coming, folks. So FedEx, they're experimenting with it. Amazon, I mean, early on, Amazon bought a robotic, robotics company for like $1.2 billion. And now they have their ro robots all over their warehouses, folks. And you're going to see a similar thing play out as these robots become better and better. Some of these companies. Now, Uber, self-driving cars. Uh, Similar action is going to happen, but again, that's a far cry from where we are right now. Because eventually, they're not going to need drivers, but boy, they need them right now because that's a far cry. We are not comfortable yet with self-driving cars all across the board. Um, 
be interesting to see how that one plays out because that is not going to be something that society accepts lightly, folks. There's a real fear of having a computer driving you around. Who's responsible when something goes bad? What, what are the what are the, what's the likelihood of a system shutdown? What if they lose connection, etc.? All those things we're kind of not comfortable yet with, uh, understandably so. They have some time. And just the fact that Uber's inking deals with medallion members in New York City yesterday, right, allowing New York City taxis to be available on their Uber apps, that's almost a step backwards from that progress. So we have some time there. But those carts delivering things from on the sidewalks, I imagine that one's coming pretty soon. Uh, when you think about delivery options, whether it's delivery food, maybe Uber Eats is able to benefit from that slightly. Uh, it's an interesting future to think about, but it's coming, folks. S&Ps giving back some of those gains as we come into the opening bell. Stay tuned, folks. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be talking about a little bit of cannabis when we get back. Those pot stocks are rocking. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money back back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have markets open and giving up some of those gains. You get the NASDAQ 100 slipping into the red on the open, negative by just six points right now. S&P is holding on to the gains, but just by seven points. You get the Dow up 70 points right now and jumping over to the headline. So it comes out yesterday. Uh, excuse me. There we go. Marijuana legalization bill nears the House floor vote next week. Now, of course, you got the House, you got the Senate, and then it would have to go to the president's desk. Uh, but nonetheless, progress there as a marijuana legalization bill nears the House floor vote next week. This article mentions the fact that you got 37 states 
Four territories in the District of Columbia now allow cannabis products for medical use. In 18 states, two territories and D.C. have enacted measures to per permit cannabis for non-medical use. I know Mar uh, Massachusetts has it for recreational as well. Uh, Massachusetts, I believe you're even allowed to grow your own, which you should if it's available for recreation because it's just a tree, folks. There's no reason why you should have to pay some company if it is legal. Meanwhile, some states do that to regulate it. Uh, many states that it is that it is legal for medical use florida one of them uh it's kind of an absolute joke that it's medical folks you can go to almost <clears throat> any internet search and find a doctor uh there's many doctors that have teamed up with companies where what they'll do and i know this in florida is that they'll just rent out a, a um, exhibition space. They'll rent out just a conference hall within a local Best Western Hotel or, or a local Hilton, right? A, a conference space room on the weekend. They'll rent it out on Sunday. They tell their patients, you can come see the doctor. We are at the Hilton Hotel Sunday from 10 till 5 p.m. every Sunday. You come, you state your case, you can have many, many things that fall under that. The point being, what really happens in that, <clears throat> which is unfortunate, is that it's just a system built that if you have enough money, you're able to legalize it for yourself, which is really wrong when you think about it. Uh, you gotta pay 200 bucks, I think it is, for to see the doctor, maybe $300 sometimes for the first consultation. Every six to nine months, you have to see that doctor again to get a script written again, just to be legal. So you see that poor people don't have the ability to have access to have a legal script for marijuana. Therefore, they are still operating under the same guides of old, where in the state of Florida, it's illegal and you can get in a lot of trouble with cannabis. Meanwhile, if you just have two or 300 bucks every nine months, that you can pay for it to be legal for you. That's basically the system, which is very, very unfortunate. Um, when you start saying that certain actions for certain people is legal if you have enough money and not legal if you don't. And that is what's happening in Florida right now. I'm sure it's happening in many other states. Um, it's it's a check mark approval, folks. Um, if you walk in there, don't even really need to show any records. You could just say you have anxiety or something like that. And most of the time they'll get a script as long as you can pay the money. So hopefully this goes through. Um, but nonetheless, back to the finance part of things. You got pot stocks rocking on that news, man. Canopy, you trade up to 950 last night. Now, you were up 10% yesterday. You're up another 6% today. You can expect the market to give back some of that. These stocks are not going to go through the moon, folks, overnight on that. But they traded pretty higher. But that's a dead cat bounce from most of them. Now, you got Tilray up another 15%. But as I've said many times, percentages on small numbers can be deceiving. You put this thing on a daily going back five years. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, Tilray last year made it up to 65 bucks. Do you even see the pop on this chart? Yeah, you can, but you get the point. Canopy had a similar run. You were up to 55 bucks. You're back a bit. Now, it's fortunate, folks. We got into Canopy this week. Uh, saw it moving earlier this week, put out a recommendation. I think it was Wednesday morning to buy Canopy. So we do own it. Uh, we are still in it, looking for a little bit of higher action. Uh, the one thing interesting here is Canopy, percentage of float, they got about 19% short. So be interesting to see how that plays out. Maybe that was some of the action last night as you were getting a squeeze from seven to eight to nine to 9.50, you're back to 8.32. Uh, we'll see how that plays out, but pot stock's getting a lift to say the least. Now what is in this bill, <coughs> excuse me, is a lot. And I say that in terms of maybe it may face some resistance uh, because it also, I believe, talks about that it deschedules marijuana um, that would allow more funding. Many people talk about they don't know the real impacts of marijuana. The reason why they can't is because federal funding is, is illegal because marijuana is so high on the schedule of drugs. I think it's comparable to heroin almost. And basically, the schedule that it's on says it offers no, rec um, no medicinal benefit whatsoever. And I forget the drugs that even they say may offer some medicinal benefit. Um, but nonetheless, it does not make sense with where it is. Hopefully they make some progress. But it also goes in there um, in terms of making sure people's sentences are done away with if they had nonviolent drug offenses, stuff like that. Unfortunately, the waters are always get um, muddied when you get stuff like that. But it's the right thing to do, folks. I mean, people getting, you know, convictions for nonviolent just drug offenses when you're just a, a, a possession, something like that messes with your life forever for pot. 
does not make sense, especially in light of what I've just explained to you. I mean, there are many people going to jail for just pot offenses in the state of Florida at the same time that all you have to do is pay two or three hundred bucks every nine months to make it legal for yourself. That is not the way things are supposed to work. So hopefully they remedy that. And there was the moral side. Finance side, these stocks have a long way to go. But man, I, I, uh, it may take them a while with how far they've pulled back. All right, let's jump around to some of the stocks that are making moves. We'll go through the line. We talked about the Kapat stocks, which is what they kick it off with, Bed Bath & Beyond as well. But when we go down, so Honest Company, this is one I want to talk about. Now, this is Jessica Alba's company. They make uh, Honest. It's like all natural. I think, I think they have to do with a lot of baby products. Let's see what they say in here. Because they are not having a good, uh, yeah, they're not having a good overnight session. And yeah, I was going to say, don't touch this stock, man. It falls out of bed on the open as well. You thought it was bad going from six till five. Well, you just lost an extra 15% just off the open if you hadn't, if you didn't take the chance to sell at $5. And you think that's bad? This thing goes public last May, and it has been a one-way ship to negative prices, folks, for Honest Company. Uh, wider than expected quarterly loss as sales of masks and sanitizing products dropped significantly. Also issued guidance for the comp current quarter that was weaker than expected. Okay, so they make more than baby products in there as well. But we, I think we bought some, <coughs> some uh, nighttime diapers from them. Uh, was not a fan at all in terms of that. Uh, let's see. Analyze. Let's see what they talk about in this company. So you're talking about a company now valued at $392 million. Clean lifestyle brand designs and sells environmentally sustainable products. Okay, distributes its products through digital and retail sales. Diapers and wipes, there you go. Skin and personal care, household and wellness. Uh, we bought them once, did not like them, barely even was able to finish the pack of the nighttime diapers. And it's probably because they're super honest, they're using all the same stuff. But guess what, folks? They were really hard to get on the baby. Uh, they didn't stretch it all. Uh, so it was almost like, you know, you need a little stretch, folks, to put a diaper around a baby. You just do. And they didn't stretch it all. It was not good. I said, these, these are, I'm never buying these again. Uh, and looks like I'm not the only one saying that, man. From 23 to 428, uh, no reason to say that stock ain't going to zero, folks. If they don't have a product that people like, and if they were relying on pandemic-type masks and sanitizers, et cetera, whew, yeah. That's, 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 that's a tough one. Nighttime diapers designed to sell more laundry detergent. What do you, well, it's actually designed to sell to see, yeah, right? I know, they, they uh, nonetheless, you need those nighttime diapers sometimes. Otherwise you end up using the laundry detergent, Dan, because you got to clean all the sheets, right? As we all know, we got kids. Uh, all right, back to the stocks, see where we're moving. Um, yeah, switch Teva. No real huge action here. Neo's got some action as well. We'll come back. We'll take a look at some of the FANG stocks, folks. We got the S&Ps hanging out to gains barely by three points. It's Friday. It's 9.38 in the morning. We're eight minutes into the trading day. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's right now up by four points, hanging on to those gains. You take a look at where we are in terms of the bonds we've gotten in this market, inching towards the six one eight price point, which would be about forty five. 50 uh, ballpark and interesting that that's right where you line up in terms of where we were in February 2nd also where we were February 9th uh, inching towards that level right now S&P's up by one tenth percent all right jumping over to another story that caught my eye this morning Instacart if you're not familiar with it they do grocery deliveries uh, I became a fan of them during the pandemic still a fan of them with young kids in the house busy sometimes you don't have the time required to make a trip to the grocery store and those grocery store trips folks they really do take some time they take an hour minimum when I'm going to shop for the family. You got I got a baby that's one now, got a child that's about to turn five in the house, a 15-year-old uh, teenager as well, along with two adults. You want to get a little bit of what everybody wants, and it takes a little bit of time, and time sometimes, folks, is the most valuable thing you got, and I am fortunate enough to be able to pay a little bit to be able to have that service, and I've used them many times over that time. It was great during the pandemic when I didn't, I had a pregnant fiance, didn't want to go into the grocery store as much as I, uh, as little as I needed to, let's put it that way, was able to use that, but I still use it for time, and one of the coolest parts about it is that it is expensive, of course. I believe they charge you about a 10% VIG on each product. So if you're spending $100 in the grocery store, your bill's going to be $110. you are going to have fees involved as well, and then you're going to have a tip for the driver. What it does allow you to do, though, as somebody that's totally into technology and keeping mind, is it shows you every single deal down the line. And I use it as a way to try and stock up on items that are in deal, stock up on items that are in BOGO from Publix potentially, uh, and you see everything right in front of you that you've ever bought before that's on sale. It's kind of cool how you can actually say, show me items that I've bought before and are on sale. That feature alone allows me to save a substantial amount of money when I focus on that aspect of things uh, and just that the time again because I can actually just say show me everything I've bought again and I go down the list and basically that's all I need you know very often do you need something that you've never bought before at the grocery store I go down the list even if I haven't thought of it I figure out oh yeah hey here's that thing I bought before that I don't even have it's a great service <clears throat> now not as great as it was back on its most recent funding round. I was trying to see when the date was, but nonetheless, so they slashed their valuation by 40%. They're still at $24 billion, okay? That's quite a unicorn, to put it lightly. Uh, they had just raised $265 million, though, which put that number at $39 billion in their most recent funding. And you're talking about big players, man. Um, Anderson Horowitz, Sequoia Capital, D1 Capital, Fidelity Management and Research, T. Rowe, they were all in there. 
their argument, the stated reasons they say, is human capital, folks, and I believe it, because you wanna compete for some technology mines, and they come in with stock options, and those options are already valuating, valuing the company at stratospheric levels that you think provides very little upside, yeah, that's gonna be a tough one. So what do they do? Pretty brilliant. Um, not sure. I would have loved to have been in the room when they tell all those investors that just gave them $265 million recently at a $39 billion valuation. Guess what? We're shaving that number back down to 24 and we're giving stock options out to human capital. But that may be the only way that they can compete. And that's what they're doing. They hope boosting recruiting and retention efforts by aligning new equity awards with the updated valuation. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the decision comes as the company navigates souring investor sentiment in technology companies across private and public markets. Now, revenue-wise, where are they in here? Because their revenue is going up. Yeah, here we go. The prospect of higher interest rates, inflation, and potential recession also weighed on its valuation. Still, they boosted their revenue by 20% to $1.8 billion in 2021. <clears throat> and yeah, they have a lot more going on than grocery delivery now. I haven't really used it for anything like that. They have um, pharmacy, you can do a lot of things. They have quick expedited type delivery that's supposed to be 30 minutes or less, something like that. But nonetheless, I use it for groceries. I mainly use it for Publix, but they do have the other grocery stores. Not sure they have Costco um, or Sam's Club, um, as you're asking in there. But yeah, they're a great company and it's interesting to see how that shakes out, but shaving it by 40%, usually those venture capitalists, man, it seems like a one-way trip, right? Where it's like, you know, one month they're raising money at six billion valuation, six months later they're raising it at 14 billion, then it's 27 billion, then it's 39, then they go public. Not always the case. They're back to 24 billion from 39 billion. But my expectation is they're gonna bring in some ta good talent there and then they'll jack that right up again uh, on their next round of funding. And guess what? They're probably going to go back to the same people <clears throat> and then they're going to get that, that that funding round up again uh, so that they validate their own gains in there as well. When are they going to go public? I don't know. I mean, you're going to see a lot of these companies go public much later in their cycle when you have the available capital you need from venture capitalists out there as long as the path is upward, which on a lot of these tech companies it are. It is. Um, this is where the future is going, folks. You know, I mean... Once I got used to this, and again, you know, if you don't have the ability to pay for that time, but geez, geez you know, sometimes, like I said, 10% is not that big of a deal. <coughs> Even if you focus on only doing certain deal items, etc., cetera, uh, especially for people when time is limited, which with the family, especially so. All right, what else we got going on? Southwest Airlines, so they got a new class. They're introducing a new class of airfare on Southwest. Southwest is up 1.75% today. You take a look at the 15 minute market, liking this on the open. Uh, new fare class, a second cheapest option. It hopes to reel in customers willing to pay up for more flexibility. So it's gonna be the one again away plus fare. It's gonna be just above one to get away. Uh, and just below its anytime fare, it's gonna allow travelers to make same day changes to their tickets without paying the difference in fare that the lower, that the lowest tier requires. So customers who opt for the new fare or classes above the new fare will also earn more frequent flyer miles. <clears throat> Carriers like all the others uh, rolled out no frills basic economy tickets, which don't include perks that used to come for free. As we all know, the airlines trying to nickel and dime us with those bag fees, et cetera. But Southwest trading higher, Never been a huge fan of Southwest, just flying it. I can't stand that I don't know where I'm sitting on the plane. Uh, are you in the ABC block? Are you gonna get the middle row in the last aisle, you know, aisle of the plane? Uh, but nonetheless, you're sitting right at the 50% of their pullback. You bounce twice at the 618 Southwest up a bit. And I imagine that travel is gonna be in a good period of time for the foreseeable future, folks. You know, crude prices, we're, we're back at 110. I imagine that will subside at some point because it's quite a parabolic run we've had since you started at about $62 back in November, okay? But domestically especially, we don't have to deal with any of the geopolitical risks that Europe's dealing with right now, as well as dealing with potential virus concerns and how that shapes international travel going forward. Domestic travel, if you find the right spot, probably a good spot to be in. Now, I'll jump around as well. We'll bring that to Airbnb and VRBO. Now, Airbnb is a great company. 
they've been on quite a run as this market has bounced. You've jumped from 140 to 170 just that quickly. What I will say is, just out of curiosity, I was looking at VRBO this morning, checking out what like a one night rental would cost. And it's spring break, folks. I didn't imagine that I was gonna book this, but I was curious. I said, what's, what's a one night cost? Maybe if you wanna go find a spot Friday or Saturday night somewhere near the beach in Florida. Found a cool place that was about 248 bucks a night or something like that, or 285 a night, I think it was. 285 a night. $485 in fees. I'll see, I'll see if I can bring it up. Uh, for the first time in a while, maybe week-long rentals work for AB and VRBO, but those fees, less than a week, it's tough. Might be going to hotels, and that would be a tough one for Sharpening their business. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Checking back in on the markets right now. s and is up by 11. You got the NASDAQ 100 basically flat right now, Dow up by 100. So jumping back, I found the graphic of what I was talking about. So this is what it looked like. I was thinking about checking in tomorrow, checking out Sunday. Uh, $285 was the actual price advertised. And then they had, I believe it was, what's, what's, what's the difference? Four, yeah, 445 45 in fees. So you got a linen fee, a damage fee, an administrative fee, a cleaning fee, a service fee, and then you got taxes on top of it to bring it to $730 for a room, or I should say a place, advertised at 285. I bring it up because I have loved these VRBOs and Airbnbs, folks, and on week-long rentals. Um, that's where we went uh, when we did the program live, my dad and I, down to Isla Morada. 
a uh, couple months back now maybe great time for a week-long rental but boy uh, haven't found myself in a long time saying I got to go find a hotel because weekly rentals on these sharing sites are way too expensive and that's what I find myself finding right now and if they just go to a week-long business model that changes things completely in my opinion in terms of what uh, the potential for them out there just a huge number pretty staggering almost comical when you look at it on that level 785 you kidding me right now what we'll finish it up with we got some great march madness last night my alma mater villanova still in it they've made the elite eight uh we also had some soccer last night i'm not a huge fan of soccer but i love good competition and you can't help but love a good upset and italy the poor italians man they're going to be missing out on the world cup i think for the second time in a row they lost to North Macedonia last night in stoppage time. Uh, one to nothing. They were supposed to crush them. Italy, I believe, is the sixth rank team in the world. North Macedonia, I believe I saw something that they're like the 66th team in the, the world. This is a graphic. We love graphics. Okay, this is a graphic of the shot totals for the game. In blue are Italy's shots. They scored zero. I think they had 36 or 32 shots, each dot representing a shot. North Macedonia had four shots, one of them in stoppage time. That stoppage time, the little small red dot there that they scored, they win one nothing. Gotta love a good upset. Feels tough for those people, the Italians, man. Tough to miss out, but man. North Macedonia getting it done in stoppage time. And look at that chart. Gotta love it. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. Live programming all day today. Have a great Friday, everybody.